Okay, in this video, we're going to go over the review for Chapter 5, Sections 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so first off, we want to remember what the sections are. So, let me get my pen going. Okay, so the first section, Section 3, that was all about angle bisectors. Okay, section four for the medians, when we did the centroid activity with the triangle that we had a balance. So those medians and um, altitudes. And then the last was inequalities in triangles. Okay, so vocab, complete. Okay, point C is in the interior of angle ABD. Okay, so let's draw that angle ABD. So this is ABD. Okay, um, if angle ABC, and then point C is someplace here, if angle ABC and angle DBC are congruent, okay, so that means if we draw this and this is congruent to this, then BC is what? Well, BC should be an angle bisector of angle ABD, okay? All right, next one. How are perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors of a triangle different? And how are they alike? Okay, so if we have a triangle, so let's do a blue triangle here. And this, I need to be a perpendicular bisector. Okay, so that's a perpendicular bisector. And what does an angle bisector look like? Angle. And if I have an angle bisector, then this angle is going to equal that angle. Okay, so for the perpendicular bisector, how are they different? So they're different because the perpendicular bisector bisects bisects a side, okay? And the angle bisector bisects an angle. So that's how they're different. How are they the same? So they can be the same. Um, you can say that each Triangle has three of these. That's one way they're the same. And you can say both divide something into two equal parts. Okay, so that's what I would say. If you have that answer, that's a pretty complete answer. Okay, so you want to have a little drawing to be able to substantiate what you're saying. Okay, moving on, finding measures, use the information in the diagram to find the measure. Okay, so this is all 5.3. So this is all angle bisectors. Okay, remember, you have to have two things. If I have these right angles and I have these equal sides, then I know that that's going to be an angle bisector, and therefore the other angle is 20 degrees. Okay, next one. Look what I have. As long as I have two out of the three parts, I can make conclusions. I have a bisected angle. I have the right angles. Therefore, this side and this side are going to be equal. So PS equals 12. Okay, they telling, they're telling me the measure of angle YXW is 60. 
Okay, if they tell me that y x z is 30, then this must be 30. So now I have the bisected angle. I have the right angles. Therefore, this and this has to be equal. So w z is going to be 9. Okay, so that's all about, this is all 5.3 angle bisectors. If this sounds unfamiliar, go back and look up your notes and your homework. <clears throat> okay, here's more angle bisector. Is DB equal to DC? Well, look at the first one. I have my equal angles and I have the right angles. Since I have those two, so I have two out of the three, check it. That means that BD equals <coughs> DC. So yes, DB equals DC because I have angle bisected and the right angles. Okay, so when I say two out of the three, in this situation, angle A is bisected and I have right angles at B and C. Okay, how about number seven? I see I have a right angle. It's not in the right spot though. So this doesn't help me. And I don't have any angle bisectors. So therefore, I cannot say that DB equals DC because I have not enough info. Okay, next one. I have the bisected, but I'm missing the right angles at B and C. So DB does not equal DC because I have not enough info. Okay? All right, let's keep going. Okay, now 9, 10, and 11. Can you conclude that angle EH is a bisector? So let's see. Can I conclude it? What do I have? Um, no, that's in the wrong spot, and these don't help me. So no, and I would say not enough info. Okay, moving on to the next one. Oh, what do I have? I have the right angles in the right spot, right along the angle itself. I have these pieces equal, so therefore I can set those guys equal. So this is yes, so I have equal um, segments, and by that I mean FH equals HG. That's one reason I can say it. And I also have right angles at F and G. So that's why that's a yes. Okay, so you have to explain, right? Don't just say yes or, or no. You're not going to get full credit for that. Okay, what about this next one? I only have this. So I only have FH equals HG, I need right angles, right angles, where? At F and at G. So this, I cannot say it. So I can say EH is not a bisector. And overall, I have not enough info, but I was specific in into in telling you what is missing not enough info okay all right so they're stressing this some more now they want you to find the value of x so let's see how we're going to do that looking at this oh i have my angle bisectors and i have my right angles therefore i know that this must equal this so x plus 11 has to equal 3x plus 1. okay subtract x Subtract x, 11 equals 2x plus 1, subtract 1, subtract 1, 
10 equals 2x, divide by 2, divide by 2, and x will equal 5. Okay, so x is 5. All right, let's look at the next one. What have they shown me? I have, these pieces are equal, and here are my right angles, so that's good. So I can indeed set those angles equal. Subtract 3x. That gives you what, 4x equals 16. Divide by 4, divide by 4. x equals 4. All right, last one on this topic. I see that I have my pieces equal and I have my right angles where they should be. So therefore that angle has been bisected. Set these two guys equal, 3x plus 14. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides and write that a little bit better. 2x minus 2 equals 14. Add 2, add 2. Again, if you tend to have a problem with solving these two step equations, I am showing you all my detail. So make sure that you're following along so that you get more comfortable with that. Okay, so that's x equals 8 is my last one. Okay, now more angle bisectors. Can you find the value of x? So what do I say? So this would be a no, why? I need my right angles. So I cannot say that x equals three. What about this next one? Um, this is in the wrong spot. So this is also no. I need the correct right angles. And I need two segments equal as well. So 40 does not equal x. And what about this last one? I have the angle bisectors. I have the right angles where I need them. So yes. So 7 equals x because I have all info needed is provided and I checked off what I needed, so you can see that. Okay, so what did I need? I need my right angles, and I need the angle bisected. And when I have those things, I can say that seven equals x. Okay, multiple choice. What's the value of x in the diagram? So let's see. I have my right angles, I have my segments marked equal, so therefore this is bisected, okay? So if that's bisected and it was a 90 degree angle, then each angle has to be 45. So I can now solve for x. Add nine, add nine, that gives me what? 54 equals three x. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and that's going to give me x equals 18. So that's my answer. And here's my supporting work. Okay, use in centers. Find the indicated measure. So am I still in angle bisectors? Yes, we are, because in centers are where the three angle bisectors intersect. Okay, so if I have that situation and I, let's see, so these are angle bisectors, so let's mark up what's going on here. This equals this, this equals this, and this equals that. Okay, then the other thing that happens from the um, in center, if I drop an altitude or a perpendicular line, these blue pieces are all equal. So 
So if I was told that this is nine, then that's nine and that's nine. So DB equals nine for that reason. Okay, let's come over here. And what do I have going on here? Well, these are angle bisectors. So this equals this and this equals this and this equals that. Okay, the other thing that happens is when we have your in center and you drop an altitude to the opposite side, those blue lines are equal. So point L is in center. Okay, so what do I know? It looks to me like they are giving me some good information here. They want me to find HL. So to find HL, I don't have information on that triangle, but what do I have? I have information about this triangle right here, the pink triangle. So come on out, draw that pink triangle. Okay, this is a challenging problem. This is 15, this is 17, and that's a right angle. So if I call this X, I know from Pythagorean theorem, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And I know the C squared side is always opposite the right angle. It's always gonna be your biggest side. I made this A and I'm gonna make this B. Okay, so my goal is to find B and I'll tell you why in just a second. Okay, so if you subtract 17 squared minus 15 squared, you're gonna get um, x squared, right? So this ends up being, if you put this in your calculator, 64 equals x squared. Well, I don't want x squared, I want x. Take the square root of each side. And when you do that, you get x equals eight. Well, how does that help me? Well, if this is eight and it's a blue piece and I'm looking for HL, HL is also eight. HL equals eight. What else is, is um, eight? FL is also eight. <clears throat> okay, so that's the end of angle bisectors. Okay, so this is the end of angle bisectors which was 5.3, lots of material. Okay, now here comes uh, section four. In section four, remember, are altitudes, which we don't do a whole lot with, and medians, which we did do a whole lot with. Okay, so in medians, you have the centroid, and you have the two-thirds, one-third, and I'll talk about that some more. Okay. Um, BD is a median of triangle ABC. If it's a median, it comes out of the vertex and bisects the side opposite it. Therefore, if I know half of that side is six, the other half has to be six. And if they were ever to ask me, the whole thing has to be 12, okay? Okay, look at the next one. BD is the median. If it's a median, this gets bisected, and therefore AD has to also be 17. And what's the whole length? That would be 34. All right, that's what medians are doing. Okay, G is the centroid. Ooh, if it's a centroid, then I must have connected all my medians. So what do I know? If DA is eight, so is DB. <coughs> Then I have the two thirds, one third situation. So this, the red, so AG equals two thirds of AE, okay? But what else do I know? I also know that GE is one half of AG. And that's the easiest thing to establish. So that makes GE a five. 
Okay, so is 10 two thirds of 15? Yes, it is. So I know I am good. Okay, they want BD, which equals eight. Then they want AB, which equals eight plus eight or 16. Next, they want EG, which I figured out was five. And they want AE, which is 10 plus five or 15. Then they want C, G. So, oh, I have more information I haven't put on yet. So let's see what else I need. Okay, I took care of this, A, G. A, G is 10, took care of this. Oh, this is the part I didn't take care of. Okay, if C, D is 18, so that means this whole piece, so we'll make it a different color. This whole piece is 18. So I know that GC equals the two thirds of 18. So that's gonna make it 12. So if this is 12, I also know that this is six. Okay, so let's see what else I can answer. DG, oh, DG equals six. And then CG, equals 12. Okay, and that's that blue piece. So you want to know how to do that math, go back and check your notes for the section if you forget about, if you have forgotten how to do this. Okay, so now we have to look at the triangle to the right, find the midpoints of sides A, B, and C. Very, very, very similar to the homework. All right, so let's see what we're doing there. Okay, so I want midpoints. All right. Looking at the triangle to the right, find the midpoints of sides A, B, and C using the midpoint formula. All right. So if I want to find the mid midpoint of A, what I first want to do is figure out these coordinate pairs. So let's do that. This is going to be 8, 4, and B will be 4, 6. So make sure you are confident in figuring out your coordinate pairs because those are absolutely key. The midpoint of side A, so that's this side right here, I get that by saying, so I'll do this up here, uh, 4 plus 8, add the x's, divide by 2, and then add the y's, 6 plus 4, divide by 2. What am I getting? 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I should be getting 6, 5. 6, 5. Okay, so this is the point 6, 5, and that is the midpoint. Okay, so it looks good visually to me as well, and I'm just going to mark this equal. The midpoint of side B. So side B is opposite angle B, and it's the red. So I'm going to add my two x's and divide by two. Again, I'm just following this formula. Add my two y's and divide by two. And what do I get? Eight and two is 10 divided by two is five. Uh, four and two is six divided by two is three. So I need five, three, and that's right here. And that looks good as well. Last one, I need the midpoint of side C, and let's do that in green. So here is side C, opposite angle C, and I'm going to add those X's. So I'm going to have four, oops, let me do that better. Four plus six over two, comma, oh, I'm sorry, I did that incorrectly. Oh, I've lost my head here. Okay, hold on. So I want the green side, so that's going to be 2 plus 4 over 2. Those are the x's. 2 plus 6 over 2. Those are the y's. 2 plus 4 is 6 divided by 2 is 3. 6 and 2 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. Let's see how that looks. So my x is 3 and my y is 4. That puts me right here. And this is 3 comma 4. And that means that this 
has to equal this. Okay, so that was really good. And that's, that's all that I've asked me to do there, right? Now, I could have asked you to do distances as well. I just did not, <clears throat> but I could have. I would have given you the distance formula just like we did in the homework, and you would have had the ability to figure out the distance formula and figure out the lengths of the various segments. Okay, P is the centroid. Okay, if P is a centroid, I must have medians because that's what creates centroids. Okay, and they told me some things. Okay, why P is 12? That's the bigger piece because it's going from the vertex to the centroid. That means the small piece has to be 6. LX, LX is on the outside. That's 15. That means that L y has to be 15 also remember because these are medians so you have to have all of these pieces equal so it's kind of a good idea before you even start looking at the problem set things equal that you know are equal okay and lz if lz equals 18 and let's go this way. So this is LZ right here, right? So I know that the smaller piece, LP, equals one-third of LZ. And one-third of 18 is 6. So if this is 6, guess what this has to be? Double it. 12. Okay, find the length of LY. Looking at that, that's 15. Find the length of YN. Okay, so that's going to be YN is going to be 6 plus 12, which equals 18. Okay, find the length of LP. So LP <coughs> is going to be 6, which I just calculated. Okay, so you want to know how to do all of those because this is really important. Okay, so this is the end of section four. Okay, section five. Is it possible to construct a triangle with the given side lengths? And if not, explain why. Well, what do you know? You know that eight plus nine has to be greater than 15. And that is true because eight plus nine is 17. Then you need to know that nine plus 15 has to be greater than eight. And 9 plus 15 is 24, so that certainly works. Okay, what's remaining? 15 plus 8 has to be greater than 9. And 15 plus 8 is 23, so that works. So you can say yes, and the reason why is A, B, and C are all true. Okay, so A, B, and C are true. And that's why you can say yes. So all three have to work. Let's do the next one. 4 plus 7, is that greater than 13? Ooh, no, because 4 plus 7 is 11. So you can say no right away. As soon as 1 doesn't work, it's not going to work. So what's going to happen is you're going to say no. Two sides added together are not greater than the third side. Okay, and that's the reason there. Okay, let's keep going. We've got a couple more things to do and we're almost done. Using an inequality statement, write the possible side lengths of the third triangle. Okay, so I love these. So this is the strategy. The possible side lengths of the third. Okay, so put your x in the middle. x has to be less than 5 plus 6, that's 11, and x has to be greater than 6 minus 5, which is 1. So what are the possible side lengths? The side lengths could possibly be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay? Look at this next one. Put your missing side in the middle. You have the inequalities. The first one uh, to the left is 21 minus 14, which is 7. The one to the right is 21 plus 14. So that's going to be 5. And 2 and 1 is 3. Okay, so what are the possible lengths? So the side lengths could be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Okay, so that's my list. List the size in order from smallest to largest. So remember, the smallest side is opposite the smallest angle. So that's side BC. The next one, the middle one, is across from the middle angle. So that's AC. And then the last one is across from the biggest. Okay, and I should put my line segments above each of those. Okay? List the angles in order from smallest to largest. Okay, the smallest side is 16. That's across from angle D. The next biggest side, if you will, is the 19, and that's across angle E. And what about this third one? That is across from angle F. Okay, so I've color coded it for you. I hope that helps. But these should be easy points. Okay, complete this with greater than, equal, or less than, or equal to. So BC is a side length here. How does BC, which is across from the smallest side, how does that compare to AC? Well, BC has to be smaller, right? So BC is less than. So this is less than. This is greater than. And then we know this is equal to. Okay, look at this next one. What do I know about these angles? Isn't this an isosceles triangle? Because of those? So aren't angles 1 and angle 2, aren't they base angles of an isosceles triangle? Well, they're always... They're always equal. Okay, so that's going to be an equal sign. Okay, and that ends this. So we've gone through all of these. We have a lot of good work. You want to go back through and go through everything that you need to go over in your packet, um, in your homework, in the notes. And then make sure that you can do this on your own without just copying down what I'm saying. Okay, thank you, thank you.